A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarai, his brother's son, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the persons they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land as far as the sacred place at Shechem by the Terebinth of Morah. The Canaanites were there in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel, pitching his tent with Bethel to the west of Ai to the east. He built an altar there to the Lord and invoked the Lord by name. Then Abram, then Abram journeyed on by stages to the Negev. The word of the Lord. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his inheritance. From the heavens the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged. And the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. Why do you notice the splendor in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Let me remove that splendor from your eye, while the wooden beam is in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, and then you will see clearly to remove the splendor from your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading, we see a pattern that has, is working out in all of our lives. God called Abram told him to do something, and he responded. God has called us. In our baptism, he's called each of us to walk as his sons and his daughters. And when we do this, he graces us to do it. He graced Abraham. He enabled Abraham to follow through. Now, Abraham had to do it, but he was the one. It's his faithfulness which enabled him to walk the way he would 
He was to walk, to live where he was to live, and to do the things that he was to do. And because of this, when we look at the first reading, Jesus is telling us something that he wants us to do, that we need to do. That is, we need not to judge. Now, judging is not that, you know, you see someone get up and abandon his family and, you know, run off and live in Las Vegas and say, well, I can't judge. Well, what he did is wrong. Now, you don't know the motive of his heart. Um, I, I remember hearing a story of a woman who, who left her husband and um, you were thinking, oh my goodness, well, what's going on here? And then it turns out she was entering, she was an older woman, she was entering dementia and she was no longer thinking rationally. See, that's the type of judging that we're, going to sp we're speaking of. We can't put motives upon people. When people do things that are wrong and if it's in our area of responsibility, we need to speak. But we can't judge the motives. We can't say, that person did X, then they're going to go to hell. I mean, I remember as a young man, there was a, I was involved in a group, and the group had a split. And I knew exactly why the split was happening. I was wrong, but that's beside the point. And, and, and I was convinced that it was this one man. And I remember in my anger, I said, you know, God, how could you let this happen? Why don't you strike him dead? And a little voice inside of me said, well, if I strike him dead, why shouldn't I strike you dead? Uh, which I think is true of all, you know, it's all of us. And when he, Jesus is speaking about the beam in our eyes, that we need to be first concerned with our faults and our sins, and we need to deal with them. And then for those people around us who we have a responsibility for, if something comes up where they need to be, we need some correction, they need some correction, then yeah. But for the most part, when it comes to correcting wrongs, it's wrongs in our life that we need to deal with first, not wrongs in the lives of those around us. And the, our saint for today, Saint Aloysius, is again, is an excellent example of God's calling and God's grace. He was a young man who from an early age felt the call to religious life. He came from a very rich family. And so I think at 15 or 16, he legally signed over his inheritance to his brother and entered the Jesuits. And while a man of just in his early 20s, a plague broke out and he served the sick, caught the plague and died. And in the office of readings, we have the letter that he wrote to his mother just before he died, where he says basically, don't be sad. God has called me to a higher place and just rejoice that I'm going to see God face to face. And that was all because of his reliance upon God's grace and God's calling in his life. So when we go up to receive the Eucharist today, let's one, go up thanking God for his calling our life, to asking him to be more open to his grace. And above all, if there is any judgment in our heart towards our brothers and sisters, let us ask the Lord to relinquish it. May Jesus Christ be praised.